Good afternoon. It's Charlotte Pierce here with the Indie Office Hours. We come live streaming every Tuesday at noon to um, talk about the publishing process, particularly as it relates to independent publishers and authors, uh, many of whom are self-publishing. Uh, so we're, we'd love to have your questions. If you've tuned in on YouTube, you can type your questions in there, or you can type them on the um, event page on Google+. Plus. Um, we are uh, Creative Commons Attribution, so if you would like to use this broadcast in your own um, site, just att attribute the source and you're good to go. So I think we're ready to start with a very important uh, topic for me, which is uh, workflow and Time management is another big one, but Laura's going to deal with that in her <laughs> her uh, hangout tomorrow night. Um, I I I always get I can think I'm, I'm a, in common with a lot of uh, publishers that you know you just get caught up in your uh, day to day you, you, the topic of the book or any particular aspect of your process, and you don't think about workflow and planning it out in advance. Uh, so. What I was running into, um, and Laura, we have uh, some road noise, I think, with you. Um, you might. I can't really yeah, do okay. much about that. Um, but anyway, well, I would run into, with the, the Day Tripper books that I've produced, it's a family uh, series of uh, books about family-friendly destinations within an hour or so of your home. So uh, I had produced it start, starting a long time ago, 2005, we did a print book, and we only did print up until about 2008 when that was the last time it was published or reprinted. Um, did really well, but we're looking to put it into ebooks and maybe an interactive ebook. We're looking to put maps in, and but those things don't always translate from ebook to um, print to you know, if I wanted to do a hardcover deluxe edition, you know, what? How do I change the manuscript with a minimal investment of time and and money? I know there's probably throw enough money at something and and you can get somebody to do it, but not all indies have that kind of a cash flow. So we're trying we're trying to hammer out something good here and uh, a good best practices, and we'll try we'll post that on the event. Uh, afterwards, uh, we'll write up something, and I'm sure Laura Williams, my lovely co-host, will write a blog post probably by the time the end of the day, um, if I'm not mistaken. She's like one of the fastest there is. Um, and Yael Shahar, our our wonderful discovery from is publishing in Israel. She's um, the author of of a novel called The Damaged Mirror, A Damaged Mirror and knows a lot about the workflows and the publishing process and particularly planning for um, ebook uh, formats, different types of ebook formats. So um, let's get started. Uh, Laura, you had found an incredibly uh, helpful graphic with uh, from Jane Friedman. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? I can um, I did. I put it in the um, stream. I can put it on oh, screen if you want. But yeah. it's um, here. Let me do. Let me do that. Let me put it on screen share so that you can see what I'm looking at. Okay. Or I can, and we can see you. I think that's the right one. Did it pop up? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I have it open in Photoshop because it's easier to keep the mm -hmm. okay. you know pixelation better. But it. Basically, just lines out different key book publishing paths, and using the broad categories: the traditional publishing, uh, partnership, fully assisted, do-it-yourself um, plus distributor, and then do-it-yourself direct. So there's all different ways that you can choose to publish your book, and I think that it that's something that people really need to take serious, serious time investigating and considering. Because if you don't, and you get halfway through a process and decide that's not for you, then you have spent a lot of money that was unnecessary, a lot of time that was unnecessary. So I really think you need to drill it down about what um, you're trying to accomplish with your book and how you want to do it. 
Right. I mean, there's there's some you know there's pros and cons to all of them. I mean, a traditional hardcover book, uh, depending on how it's uh, distributed, usually is put out to the bookstore and can have, unless it becomes a, a big bestseller, a short life. Whereas a um, ebook has a longer life because it's up there for you know as long as you want it to. So I mean, five years from now, people could still go and get that book right from there. It's it's kind of depends on how and how you, you can um, you can. Po uh, upload a new version so if you find a mistake exactly. it'll cost you a little bit of money but not a withering amount. I, Which know, is, I think for print on demand and lightning source I think it's forty dollars for a cover or interior change. Yeah which is um, amazing particularly if you're doing nonfiction books anything right. that has a shelf life of, for the content you can go back and uh, update the content mm -hmm. year to year and keep it fresh and something somebody wants to you know still something yeah. wants to read and it doesn't get um, obsolete. So I think our, our key point here is decide your publishing method yes, or methods yep. and then basically it, it does butt right up against the time management issue because if you then uh, a timeline, there's different timelines for each of these things so it, it would help to kind of do that at the same time. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah, Yael, do you have a, any experience uh, in, in related to this? Do you do books for other people, too? Uh, yes, I actually, we've got a small uh, mom and pop, literally mom and pop type of uh, publishing house where what we do is pre uh, provide technical services to authors and everything from editing to book covers to ebooks to print uh, POD uh, layout in InDesign. So we do that, and so far we've, we're working on about three different books right now, two poetry books and one novel, which is uh, still being written at the moment, so we, ha we don't have the manuscript for that yet. So for the so workflow, we, how do you... I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, when you, when you plan your week or month or year or a new book comes along, what's your, what's your actual, you know, step-by-step process of planning that production well, process usually, out? Usually, usually we'll start with the, man, the bare manuscript and look it over and advise the author whether or not we think that there's anything in it. And usually we're not going to be putting something with the, our logo if we don't like if we don't like the, yeah. the product. But obviously if somebody's just coming to us and saying if you'll help with the uh, just the technical aspects, then we, it doesn't really matter what the content is. Obviously, in a case like that, if we don't think it's going to sell, it doesn't keep us from helping the author. Obviously, um, but what we'll do is usually take a look at the manuscript, do a basic edit, if they if that's what they want. Obviously, because they're not going to be paying for services that they don't want. We do a basic edit, and then we ask them which direction they want it to go in, either EPUB or POD or both. And from there, we start with the graphics and the layout simultaneously in parallel tracks to save time. And usually, it'll be ebook. Most of these authors are people who really, what they want to do is get something out there uh, through Kindle and uh, iTunes and, and all the rest of it, Kobo. Mm -hmm. And so we'll guarantee that they'll have a, an error-proof ebook by the end of the process with the graphics. And do you have a, a little tool that you use for like timeline? planning? I haven't. My husband does. He's the editor and he usually will use Google Tasks to do just about everything and he'll lay out all of his hours. I do the graphics and the InDesign layout and the ebooks and I'll just keep track of my hours but I won't I won't do any kind of timelining because normally I'm, I'm working on too many different things to even ha put it all I can't plan that far ahead essentially. Yeah, I have a moment to get together the time work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's something that I believe strongly in as far as planning anything is uh, building your process and what, as you're doing the projects to write down all the steps that you did so that it is easily to replicate on the next pro process project mm -hmm. and you don't um, you know you don't forget specific things that are really important to that project you have to go back and take care of those and I think that's what you what um, you need to think about Charlotte is coming up with your exact process so it's easy to replicate. Not only that, that if you, it, as you grow and start bringing people in, you want to be able to hand them something, say this is exactly what needs to be done. These are the steps, yes. and uh, 
go from there. So you're absolutely right. I mean, and you're going like to be in, in the thick of when you're in the thick of it on any given day. It's like you're yeah. going to be happy because I did the process for my show last night, which I'm giving to you for your show. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's all the posting and everything. You're going to be happy about that. I'm glad. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna drop everything and come to that thing. <laughs> Actually, I have to row before until seven. It starts at seven thirty tomorrow, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Eastern time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yael might not have to be able to catch it. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're due to be uh, here for half an hour. I'd love to have some questions. If anybody wants to put them down now, we can answer them, or afterwards we will monitor the events and the YouTube site. For, uh, I, I have questions. Qu some questions, Shia. When you're doing an um, ebook publication, what is the first thing you do? Is that is do you go ahead and get your ISBN number? Is that the first thing you do? I mean, what is the exact like? And you can be kind of broad about it. But what's the process you go through? Okay, normally I'll, the ISBN. I'm usually not handling that aspect. That's the more of the business okay. aspect, which uh, my husband, and my partner in this partner in crime does and that will be usually uh, in consultation with the author because some of the, some of the authors will say I don't need my own ISBN I'm just going to be going through create space so we don't worry about it if the author wants us to put our imprint on the book then we'll buy the ISBN for them and if they simply want to have their own imprint on the book then they can tell us okay I do want to buy, to buy an ISBN two ISBNs because you have to have at least two ISBNs. You have to have one for the print book and one for the ebook. It's going to be two different ISBNs. And if you have, do, do two, if you do several different formats of ebooks, theoretically you should also have an ISBN for each different format. I don't usually count Kindle. There's a there's a little bit of a, a disagreement in the industry about that because Kindle has its own numbers and they don't use the ISBN. So I don't oh, I normally buy. Hmm. Yeah, they they have their own little uh, their own uh, ISIN uh, ASIN number, and so I don't usually waste waste an ISBN just on Kindle. Well, so, that's a very good tip. Yeah, yeah I didn't know that. To know, yeah. So what uh, what so, is you had a, a kind of a process you go through in planning for a Kindle edition? Yeah, I can actually show you the steps that I go through and share mm -hmm. the screens for you. Please. So do. I start with a word. I start with a word document, and let me get to the screen here. I'm just learning Google hang Hangouts here. Um, well, while, you, while you get that, I wanted to uh, put a question up from or a comment up from Bruce Jones, who uh, was on Indie Office Hours a while a few weeks ago, talking about um, book trailers. A wonderful, uh, easy technique he has to use your phone to make a book trailer. He says my issues shift from production to publishing and then marketing. Each has challenges. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah. but you know we sort of forge ahead, and like each book, we kind of um, emerge with it with a better system, hopefully. And right. Uh, and we would love to help people out uh, by creating a a nice little checklist. So go ahead. Here, here's the if you're seeing a word document on screen right now, do you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'll start with this word document, and if you were to turn this into HTML via the Microsoft Word internal mechanism for saving, you end up with absolutely horrid HTML, which will usually throw up errors when you come to make an ebook. So you don't want to do that. And so instead of doing that, and this is a, a complicated document, it has footnotes, it's an academic document, sure. and it's got Hebrew and English and everything else, uh, it's got block quotes. So something like this, if you were to make an HTML out of this with, with uh, the, the native HTML maker, forget it. You will end up with an absolute salad. So instead <laughs> of using salad. that, yeah, it's it will be and very this bad. Is no, no illustrations, right? No illustrations. If you want illustrations, it gets even more hairy. But I'll cover that in a minute. Wow. Uh, but now, what I do is I go to this wonderful tool. Do you see this uh, Word Clean HTML? Yes. Not yet. Yeah, there Word. it is. Yeah. Word okay. to Clean HTML, okay? So what I did here was I post, I pasted that document in. You just open word to clean html.com and you copy your document in. I'll go back one screen. That's my document that I copied in. And when I convert to clean HTML, it makes the most beautiful HTML you could imagine. That's wonderful. It's fantastic. So all you have to do is copy that, which I will now do. Copy. 
copy, and I'll have to put this into something else and show you what it looks like. Hold on, let's go back to this and do another screen share. And we're going to go to the last, the last little tool, and this is this is the magic, this is really the magic box. This is called Sigil. Um, you see this on the screen? You have a, a wonderful little tool here. And are you seeing this? Yes. Okay, yes. good. Because I don't know how what the lag is. Um, this is a an, an EPUB editor, which is an absolute little gem. It's shareware, or rather it's open source. Unfortunately, it's not being updated anymore, so I don't think it'll be too long before someone else begins working on it. But how do you spell moment, that? Uh, S I G I L. Dot com. And, well, I don't know if they got a. I think they're on GitHub now rather than on dot com, but okay. uh, they don't have their own. Uh, rather, they don't have their own site for it. I think they're just yeah. on GitHub okay. now. But you can Google it, and it's all over the web. Yes, I think and I did that. What you do is you can go into code. Now, this is where my technical background comes in because I love HTML. I love working right. with HTML. So you can go from regular book view to code view. If you go into code view, you simply paste your nice clean HTML in here, and you go back to book view, and you now have an ebook. No, mm -hmm. it's, I like that. Now, it's not quite as easy as that. You do have to go through and you have to select your, your headings. Mm -hmm. um, let's say you wanted this to be heading, it's heading three, you wanted it to be heading two, you could do that. What happens next, though, is a, an ebook. In order for it to display well on all browsers, it can't be one long file. What you need to do is split it into chapters, and Sigil allows you to do that by saying, "I'm going to split it. Every single heading is going to be its own chapter." And, and that'll start it on a new page. That'll start it on a new page. Exactly. Also, watch what happens with your uh, table of contents. Let me just very quickly split that. Split it cursor, and split here at cursor. I'll just do two of them just to show. And I now have, on the left-hand side, I have three different documents. Oh, that's when wonderful. I go, yeah. When I go to make a table of contents, and I'm just going to be doing this like on the yeah. fly, but the table of contents is already made for me, and I can just say oh. I only want table of contents up to two headings. I say this, and on my left-hand side now I have the table of contents. Oh, now that's great. That made your day, didn't it, Charlotte? <laughs> oh my God, I want that. I'm now, there. Uh, we're not done yet. We're not done oh, yet. Okay. It, it gets even better. Gets oh even no! Better. You can I now have to say, mute myself so I don't scream. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kindle, Kindle doesn't like EPUB table of contents, which are native. What you do for Kindle is you make an HTML table of contents, and so you go up here to table of contents and you say, "Give me, please, a." Create an HTML table of contents, and there it is. And it's now added to your document. And you can add it to, you can move your, you can just slide this to the end of your document, because most people prefer it to be at the end. Reason for that is that when they show the sample, they show a certain percentage in the Kindle yes, book inside this point. book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you stick that at the back, and it doesn't take up your sample place. So that's one thing. Now, that's part of the magic. The other part of the magic is the way you style these things. Uh, you're, you're familiar with, with Microsoft Words with styles right. and style sheets. Here you have a native style sheet that you can use. Now, I've po posted in the one from my book, but you can say here, I want my H2s here to be this color, to have this much border behind them, beneath them. Okay. That's uh, headline, headline, right? H2 yeah. is a headline. Yeah. Right, yeah, and you can, you can do you can select all of these. All you have to do is go through now, go back to your documents one at a time. Actually, I I usually do this with the first document before I split it, and I I say I want to link this to a style sheet, and you tell it which style sheet you want to use. Okay. And now it's linked to the style sheet, and any change you make in the document is going to be reflected here. It's a nice. Very, mm. very useful tool. So that's Sigil. That when saves you about a day right there. It's It saves an immense amount of time. And I started using it at the beginning because I had an ancient, ancient copy of Word. And I couldn't move the chapters around. And the book that I wrote is a memoir. And it's got, mm. it had 
hundreds of letters at first. It had hundreds of letters and separate chapters and dialogues between the main characters in various formats. And in order to move those chapters around, I simply made them into HTML chapters, and then I can just slide them around here, update my table of contents, and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. Then I could stick that on my iPad or whatever mm -hmm. and sit in an easy chair and read it as if I was some poor schmuck taken off the street to read the book and say, <laughs> okay, this chapter doesn't flow into that chapter. Let's go move them around. Come back upstairs, move them around, repeat, rinse, repeat, and <laughs> it's it, it probably saved me about a year of writing, which the book took me about seven years to write. It probably would have taken me, I don't know, probably nine or ten without this tool. It was just an amazing tool to have. So I, this I, is that sigil. Yeah. I have a question. It's my understanding, and please tell me if I'm wrong, that one of the easier places to write a ebook to be able to propagate it out is uh, in Scrivener. Yeah, Scrivener does make nice ebooks. Although, truth to tell, I did use Scrivener. I gave it a whirl. I don't have the um, the Macintosh version because I can't afford a Macintosh, sadly. Right. Uh, but please buy lots of my books and I'll be able to afford a Macintosh. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. But at, I didn't have the good version of Scrivener and I couldn't do any kind of styles. And it didn't save me any work because I still had to go back and, and define all of my styles. And because I'm an HTML fanatic, it was easier for me to do all of that in, uh, in Sigil. Okay. And of course we're talking about a book that actually started at about 800 pages and ended up being 400 pages. Meaning wow. that I had to do a lot of styling that a is a difficult. Product, that's but. a difficult uh, direction to go in. Usually, it's easier to go bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, this was a memoir. It was just so much material covering some 80 years of of someone of two people's lives, and they had to be interwoven. So what happened was that I used Sigil from the beginning because I didn't have the other tools. And then when I found a copy, when someone showed me a copy of Scrivener, I sat down and played with it and generated an HTML document or a, an a EPUB document. And I wasn't really happy with the results. I had to do so much tweaking that it well, I really think writers are time. more in the composition process are really into Scrivener. Right, they? Scrivener is that. wonderful for that. And then it, it yeah. kind of poises the document to be put into uh, ebook format. Yeah, but, right. I just um, came to it too late and without the without yeah. the better version. The, the Windows version of Scrivener doesn't have all the bells and whistles and it doesn't have styles. Mm -hmm. So uh, what about um, a manuscript that comes from InDesign? Like if you've taken a raw text file, put it in InDesign, formatted it. Uh, have you ever done that? Yeah, that's another experiment I did because I love InDesign. And I use InDesign for all of our interior layouts and for our, uh, most of our other things. But um, it didn't generate a very nice, clean EPUB. Again, I had to spend so much time tweaking that it doesn't. It didn't help me very much. I see we have a uh, question on the screen. Right, we have um, Bruce Jones. Yes, it's oh, okay. He wants right. to know if you have a solution. Um, if we are HTML, yeah. Okay, let me let me screen share the that document again, and I'll show you what you can do with it. Uh, let's find it. Oh, that's a good question. Where is it? Have I closed it? Let's see. It's not. You don't have to be uh, an HTML wizard to do this. It it's nice, but you don't have to be. If you look at any of these documents, I assume this is up on the screen right now, right? Yes. It's basically a fairly simple word editor, like a, a simple text editor at this stage. And you can use it as a text editor. The HTML know-how is mostly stuff you can Google. For example, you can tell, you can Google, how do I make my headings a nicer color with CSS, with style sheets. Okay. And You'll get you'll get nice answers, and it's quite simple. It's really it is it definitely isn't rocket science. But if if you start with a clean HTML, you see how it works. Is it actually looks pretty good at, even right out of the box. So you don't need to do a lot of tweaking. And the tweaking is mostly if you really do like the HTML side of things of styling things. If you need pictures, it can get a little hairier, because if you need pictures, you're going to need, be able to lay them out on screen and either make them dynamic or not dynamic. And that's a whole different. Uh, I'm not even going into that because it's actually a little bit more complicated. But in Sigil, you can add, with drag and drop, you can add images. You simply say, I want an, an existing image. And you tell it where you want the image to come from. Let's say I'm just going to just grab something. Um, let me get another one just in Because case. with the day tripper, it's really important to have images or some kind of 
interactive link. I mean, can you do interactive links in Kindle? Oh, yeah, absolutely you can. Okay. Yeah. Let me say I just put in a, an image, and I wanted to put this image here. And again, I don't need a lot of HTML for this. I simply I added it to my, to my images over here. I added a couple of images with right click. And now I go to image, just like you would in a, a WordPress file, and I say, OK, I want this image. And I stick it in here. And then I can tell it, OK, I want it to be centered. I want it to be over there. I can and do what's, whatever I want what's to be said that it, or how is it, how do you prevent it from falling in a really weird place in a Kindle book? Well, like, if you put it in inline, the way this is now, it should be fine. Inline meaning between two paragraphs. Yeah. It, it can display in very funky, strange ways if you do right align and left align, which you do okay. through your HTML. But if you're just putting it inline like this, I've never had trouble with images with Kindle. I, I, I have I was reading a uh, Kindle book and it was from a major publisher, and the image was there, the caption was below it, and they were split over pages. And it might have had something to do with the font that I was using on it, yeah. but it was just it, when I opened it, it was just like that, and it was really uh, I didn't want my bit, books to be like that. <laughs> no, that's a bit weird. Well, what you can do is you can play a little bit with it, and then worst case, you ask Professor Google. Uh, why is my image being split? And sometimes there will be something fairly simple to, to fix it. For example, you want to put your image uh, in a place where all you have is just paragraphs and not uh, a heading, for example. Mm -hmm. So here I put it between two paragraphs. If I had put it in, in the middle of my heading, of course, I would get very strange results. So you want to make sure that you're putting it where you want it, and you can move and, the image. Uh, is around. it better just to include a caption as a part of the image, like attach it to the image? No, you can actually write a caption below it, and you can style it. And it will stay with that picture? Uh, yes and no. It's, uh -huh. it's not foolproof. It's foolproof with browsers. It's not yet foolproof with, uh, uh, with e-books. You, yeah. can, you okay. can, though, add your caption to the bottom of your, your image, the top yeah. of your image. And that, of course, the image will stay, will be static. And then, uh, that's yeah, it's just part of the image. Right? I'll tell you, this is, this is a... Uh, show that I'll have to watch over and over. Okay. I mean, there's just show so you much just... information, and it's so helpful. Yeah. Now, here's how you can add links. Again, you don't need to be a, uh, an HTML wizard to do it. You simply highlight your text, go up to your little link button here, insert link, and copy your link in there from wherever it is and put your target if it's going to be a new window or whatever here would be blank. But uh, you can you can add your image uh, there and or your okay. Page. So it doesn't come over from Word necessarily, right? It sh it probably won't. I think these the anchors for the uh, in this one. I'm not sure because I would have to look at the, the HTML code. But let me see if the uh, the footnotes came in as links. Yeah. Uh, no, it's trying to find a file, mm -hmm. so that didn't come in as a link. Although. That's an anchor, so I can find, you know, I could probably look for it. I usually do those H the coding of HTML for footnotes and things by hand. And I don't trust yeah. Word. I don't trust Word to do pretty much anything. Uh, Isn't it better to, I mean, uh, there's Atlantis. What Kate Sullivan, who's uh, the publisher of Candlemark and Glean Books in Vermont, was, she spoke at our conference about um, Atlantis, uh, which is an open source software. And she said it's just seamless to... Uh, export it to Kindle, uh, EPUB, or Mobi, and um, uh, she was going to come on and talk about it at some point. But oh, I hope she does, because I would like yeah. to. I'm, I'm, I love testing new things to see uh, to streamline the whole process. Yeah, she. I mean, she stood there right in front of me and swore this is the easiest thing you'll ever do, and I say, okay, bring it on, Kate. You know. But, <laughs> yeah, I'd like uh, to see that. Yeah. I also like to look at the back end of the coding and make sure that everything is very clean because the way the book, um, the way it displays on different, uh, it'll display fine on Kindle, for example, and then you try to look on it uh, on uh, Nook or Kobo, and yeah. things have moved out of their place, or the fonts are acting in odd ways that they shouldn't, and so usually the culprit for that is something funky going on in the back end, and so when that happens, I look at it and say, okay, something odd is is happening with the code itself. Yeah. There might be a Usually little the messy, messy code that's creating some spacing or issues or something. Right. So once yeah. you've cleaned everything up and you're using the, the very, very minimum of code, 
then you're going to have usually a very clean, effortless process across all the different platforms from Kindles to iTunes. Yeah, I started um, with Kindle Direct Publishing. I was I'm putting a book on there and um, or Kindle Direct Select or something. What's it called? Anyway, um, I noticed that the like for different screens they'll they have a, a way to test it in in their little online um, platform right. that you use. Mm -hmm. So you can test it for uh, iPhone, iPad. Show you one other little thing that you can do with this program that even if you weren't using it to make an ebook, but you were just importing an ebook, it has an ebook tester, a flight tester here, that is mm -hmm. the same tester that all of the different platform, platforms use. Oh. And it will tell you if there's something causing a problem. So, for example, there are certain things here wow. that shouldn't be here. And so it will tell me where they are. I can actually double click and it'll take me to the issue. And oh it'll say, hey, hey, don't use that. And it'll help me to figure out what's now going what, on. Now, in that case, what, what are you not supposed to be using? Clear? Uh, let me see what it's. I have to get my glasses on for this. So. Uh, it says, <laughs> attribute clear is not declared for element BR. Right. Okay, so it didn't like the BR that's being used. Somewhere here is a BR being used, and I could find BR. Hold on, let me look for it. Is that in the whole section or in the whole chapter? No, well, BR is a break. It's just yeah. a line right. break. And so, ah, you see it has here. Oh, it has, doesn't have break. an unbreak. That one's or... actually okay. That one's okay. Let's find the next one. Somewhere in here there's oh, going to be one that it didn't like. And you can do a global replace if you figure it out. Right, exactly. Or size. Here, it didn't like the attribute size for HRs. The HR is the horizontal rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, <clears throat> browsers love to put, you could put size and you could put width, but for ebooks, that's not yet recognized. And so, what you do is you simply take those things out that are extraneous to the code and save it, and you're clear. And here's that clear that it was looking for. That it said, so, the horizontal know, rule. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so horizontal anything, rule, it will just be whatever the ebook format is. Default right. is. Yeah. So, here's, here's how it is. And the word, it was it was only a third of the page. It was a 33% and it was lying to the left. Right. Okay. That's what Microsoft Word generated, but it didn't it didn't like that. So if I were to run this again, those two errors wouldn't be here anymore. Now I'll have a couple of other errors, but there's not that many errors in this document, and that's right out of the box without doing anything. Oh, right. wonderful. And <clears throat> you can decide whether you want to live with a, the, yeah. Like, so we're, we're sort Kendall of. Will take it. Kendall will take it with with all of your errors. Kendall is very, very forgiving. Kobo and Nook will not, and iTunes will, not only will it not take it, but it will spit in your general direction and cuss your grandmother. <laughs> so I, you know, I have a, a colleague who was basically almost, his company almost went under waiting for Apple to approve their, their oh. uh, document. You know, it's just like, holy cow. Why but does this are, surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, running out of time, sort of. I, I mean, do we have? Do you want to wrap up on this, and we'll we'll just to be continued? Or, well, we can do co uh, to be continued. But I'll just wrap up and and hear the the takeaways for me at least for this whole process that I've been I've learned it the hard way is that you can generate an ebook better by using the actual designated tools for doing ebooks rather than relying on something that does everything, washes the dishes for you, and shoots missiles out of the sky and makes ebooks. <laughs> and Shoot. it's it tries washes to do too many things. And leave spots on them. What's that? Washes the dishes and leaves spots on it. Shoots yeah. missiles out of the sky but it also hits your, your national airline yeah, as it's coming in. So you want to use something that's dedicated and I would I much prefer doing learning a little bit of uh, coding that's required and doing it the uh, the dedicated way rather than relying on something that's got a Swiss Army knife of different functionalities, none of which work very well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think my takeaway is that you either pay for someone to do it for you, you learn a little bit about it so you can make it, bring it up to the level of of uh, excellence that you're willing to publish, and then, or you uh, you publish something that's that's uh, substandard, and your reputation suffers. So. Yeah, you pay for you pay for substandard, and the, the goal here is to do everything right and give that book the best possible start that it can mm -hmm. get by having everything nicely edited, formatted to a T, 
etc. Oh, okay, yeah. Where are we located? Okay, uh, the answer is we're located in Israel. We have two clients in the U.S. right now, one of which is actually, he's Russian, but he's, uh, he's at the moment he's in Israel, but he's based in the U.S. And so we, we take projects from pretty much everywhere. And it's, it's mostly what the authors ask for. If they, if they ask us only to format an ebook for them, that's what we do. If they say, please edit this document for us, that's what we do. And if they want us to put our imprint on it so it, it doesn't look the, the dreaded self-published, then we'll do that as well. And what is the name? Do you have a name, business name, or is it? Or website? Y yes, it's kaspapress.com. Yeah, I should have put that in the tagline. Kaspapress.com, uh, kas all one word. K-A-S-V-A um, -S Press, P-R-E-S-S, -S. Okay. and we've only now set up a, web, a website, so there's not all that much on the website yet, but we do okay. have an introduction to what we're offering there. Right. Plus there's a, a promo for my book, because our my book was our, our first major project, and what we've learned to do was all learned in the process of, of the last seven years of getting that book ready to publish and out there. The only thing I have not been good at with all this whole thing is PR. So if I need to do PR, I'm going to have to hire someone else to do it because that's not You're my You're doing thing. it right now, Yale. Oh, yeah, that's well, okay. True. That's, that's true. good. That's what it's all about. It's these. I just love these great connections that we make, and it. My business is starting to percolate from, from all the things that I people that I've met here too. So, uh, PiercePress.com is my uh, site, and Laura's been actually helping me with that, and I'm trying to figure out how I can. Put uh, all my various uh, interests and book projects and video projects and everything on uh, <laughs> on one site. And I don't know if I can, but I, I'll push it to the limit, no matter what. So anyway, um, Laura, do you want to wrap up? And yeah, first I want to say that Matthew Herschler said that he really needed to hear this, and it's making sense to him to thank you, thank you, and and that's wonderful because it is kind of a complicated subject. But you, you gave us that information in such a clear way, Al, that it absolutely was amazing. I mean, absolutely, it really was. Yeah. It really yeah. was. Because, it, you know, people think self-publishing is just uh, so easy just to run out and do, and it's not. Not to do it right. It's not. What I would like to do with this topic is to bring maybe bring Kate on and Yael back and maybe do a little uh, demo uh manuscript and take it in and just you know show it print it out show mm -hmm. it in in text format you know and then take it through the process and with some very simple coding and I think people will feel a lot more comfortable um, basically you know if you have the time you can't break it if you're doing a test right and you're right. not going to get it you're not going to publish it if it's if it's completely wrong because it will go through the system so um, that's a great yeah. idea that's a great idea. Yeah, let's do a little, uh, you know, like a, what do you call it, a pilot project or a demo or? Yeah, or yeah. demo, I Incubator guess. or something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, uh, awesome. thank you all both and uh, for the, the uh, vast and appreciative audience that we have out there. Um, we are looking forward to seeing you next Tuesday at noon Eastern Daylight Time in yep. uh, the U.S. and Laura... Williams will be running a writing biz uh, hangout tomorrow night at 7:30 Eastern Time, and um, uh, she's talking about. Uh, are you delving into time, time management? Right? Time management with Ryan J. Rhodes. He just uh, completed a book with uh, Lainey Sullivan on time management, and um, he, uh, you know, he runs his own design company. He has so many things going on that uh, I definitely want to hear what he has to say. How does he keep all his balls in the air? <laughs> yeah. I think after yeah. you hear enough of these people talking about their, you know, you can pull what relates exactly. to you from there and your, your own temperament and so forth. So exactly. Definitely exactly. need to see that. Thank you both, and we'll see everyone next week. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Okay.